So now we're going to have a look at 20 and 30 ounce skinny tumbler templates, the tapered templates and how to create them. This is for sublimation exercises really. The calculators you'll need, you need to calculate the diameter from a circle and that's at that address there. Now the key to this whole exercise is the cone pattern generator and that's available from that um, website there. Now I'll put these <coughs> in the description as well so you can find them there. Now this one creates two templates I'll be working on, a 20 ounce and a 30 ounce, but I'll only go through the 20 ounce because the 30 ounce is exactly the same except slightly bigger. Now you'll need two different um, two different documents to create to start with and you can see there the width and the height and it actually you'll need an A3 landscape sheet of paper to print these on. You can select the PDF page size to fit or reduce the scale. So depending on what you want in the end result, you can adjust your scales that way. But we'll get there when we get there. Just be aware that different printers print things differently. Now with these two calculators, you can produce the master shape for actually any cone you need. Now, a skinny latte cup or a mug is actually a cone. It's an inverted cone. Now, you can get your mug measurements. You need the top diameter and the bottom diameter and preferably in millimetres. I find it easier to work in millimetres. They're consistent sizes. It's considerably more difficult to get accurate measurements here if working in inches because most applications on computers don't do the fractions as we know them as in 9.25 inches rather than 9 and a quarter inches. That's really difficult to work out sometimes. So 9 and a quarter inches is a neat 235 millimetres. Unfortunately the tools I show you use both but I'll be using millimetres. Of course as I say you can shortcut a lot of calculations if you have the mugs in your hands, just take out your trusty plastic school ruler and measure them. You need the top and bottom diameters in the end. Now, mugs come in many sizes and we'll use, use these two examples. These are all your measurements you'll need, so I'll leave this page here for a moment, or pause it, and read through it. Copy it down if you like. And you can see I've got nine and three quarter inches tall, ten inches at top circumference, and nine and a quarter inch bottom circumference. I've converted these to millimeters using Google. Simply type in nine and three eighths inches to millimeters, and back it'll come with the measurements. Now let's find the diameters, the next measurement we need. So you've got the circumference, and you can calculate diameter from the circle at that website that we gave you and you find the following measurements. The top diameter, TD, is 81. Bottom diameter is 74 millimetres, BD. So TD is top diameter, BD, bottom diameter. Easy, isn't it? So let's make the cones. Now that's right, a tapered latte mug, for example, or a skinny, is actually a cone. But there's one trick you need to watch out for in the cone generator. It generates a true cone, which is upside down. That is, the largest part of the cone is on the base. The smaller part is the truncated top. And for this we need the second calculator, the cone pattern generator. This is the key to the whole exercise. Opening the cone generator, simply enter the three measurements and press calculator. The top width, not the top of your mug, the top of the cone. So the top of the mug is the bottom of the cone. <laughs> Look at the two measurements. Top width, 69. Base width of the cone, 75. Stand that on its head and you have the top of the mug, which is 75 in diameter, and the bottom of the mug, which is 69. The height of the mug up that side is 203. Once you press calculate, the pattern is generated. And this will appear just below the calculator. 
you'll have to scroll up and down your, your screen page of course but there it is and so the next step is to grab the PDF version of this template don't try and print that out or copy it from the screen you'll be wasting your time look to the left of the diagrams to PDF button you see over the left there this will bring up another window with downloadable copies for you when you press on diagrams to PDF it generates in another window the PDF files and you click on them to download them now also notice if you're doing other cones if you right click on those page on that second page or hover over the cone shape it brings up a little pop-up and these are the pop-ups telling you the exact size of the paper um, and things like that that you'll need so you can see the 30 ounce paper size needs an A3 portrait mode and the 20 ounce paper size is A3 landscape interesting no well there you go it's important because your PDF cone fits properly so you set your paper size for the 20 ounce and the 30 ounce to two different sizes so when you're creating your affinity photo new document set the paper size in other words you'll be creating a custom um, document and I'll show you how to do that you have your PDF document saved to your computer now we get to business to bring the PDF into affinity photo you can drag and drop them easily enough but we'll get to that in a moment I'll work with the 20 ounce template now you can see I've created my own custom preset there 20 ounce skinny and right next to it a 30 ounce skinny and you can see one's landscape and one's portrait you can see by the measurements below them create your own preset first rename it 20 ounce skinny set the measurements to those shown in the boxes now I've set the color to RGB only because I like the colors and the huge color range but if you're going to print them um, print them out you're probably best going for CMYK but that's a choice you can make your printer will convert RGB to a suitable CMYK color range and if you've got a high resolution which you'll probably need um, color printer which you'll probably be using it doesn't hurt to uh, select RGB color and it gives you that extra color range that your printer when it prints will convert RGB to but that's behind the scenes you don't need to worry about that you can see I've got DPI set to 300 and the document units in millimeters so create your new document oh that by the way are the measurements for the 30 ounce skinny and I've got the red arrow over the top there but width and height are shown down the bottom 265 by 298 same 300 DPI millimeters and RGB no margins now once it's created and you have a clear background drag your PDF image into the newly created document and it should show up as an embedded document you can copy and paste but I'd prefer if I were you to drag it in you don't need to worry about placing the document just pick it up in one in and drag it across into the screen now because that original cone was upside down we need it the right way up just for your own sanity so click on arrange and then flip vertical so your outline is the right way up don't try and spin it around with the handle otherwise it goes right off the page and you'll lose track of it just flip it where it is and that's that will give you that now this is the tricky bit select the pen tool which you can see down the left hand side there one two three four it's the fifth item up on the toolbar from the bottom there select the pen tool and draw a stroke beginning at the top left to each point right the way around back to the starting point you'll have straight lines between the points so you go left to right across the top then down to the bottom right then across to the left bottom and then back up and close the circle 
right at the top left again. You'll have straight lines between the points. That's fine, but you need these the way they are. Now select the node tool, That's click on the pen tool and select within the pen tool the node tool. It's got the little down right arrow and you can select either pen or node from the same tool. And draw up the horizontal lines at their midpoints so that they're following the curve. It's just a very gentle curve so you just click on the line and you'll see the green line appear if you're midpoint there. Make sure you're midpoint, that gets it even both sides. And just gently drag the line up, curve it up so it follows the curve underneath. Do the same down the bottom. You can see there, using the node tool, carefully draw the top line up towards the curved line. The green invertible line indicates you are dead centre of the image. Repeat this for the bottom line and if you enlarge the whole image by zooming in you can also use the node tool to adjust the positions of the corner points if they need it. And you can see in the top left hand side there that I might just have that top left corner point slightly off a little bit and I could pull that out to the left just a fraction. It depends how fussy you want to be. Probably doesn't really matter. Now we've got our layer there. Select the bottom layer and then draw out a rectangle shape in white to fill the canvas. You just want to fill the canvas with white, a rectangle shape, and drag it down. It will place itself above what I've renamed the PDF document. But drag it down so it's the bottom layer. And you can see it. Um, that will allow the PDF document and the PDF stroke shape to show up on top of it. So you can see what you're doing. If you don't do that, you won't be able to see the outline. You'll now see a new layer in the layer panel and an outline shape sitting over the layer image. It is in fact a new layer unrelated to the PDF image of the mug curve. That's the one you drew with the pen. Now let's put an image in there. Now we're getting down to it. That's your PDF skinny latte template. And there we are. Here's our image placed inside the shape. Now I've just used an image from, as you can see there, uh, from Unsplash. Just dragged it onto the, onto the, onto the document. It's, it put, gives you a green plus sign. Click that and it will drop the document and hide everything on the page. So then you drag that document down so that it's halfway, the green, the, the blue I think it is, the blue line is halfway through the PDF stroke so that it forms a mask. You don't want it exactly below it, you want it halfway into it so that it sits inside that top layer. I'm sure you're familiar with that. And you can see, if you can still see the entire image and it's blanking out the shape, you've dragged it too far. Drag it back so it's halfway. Halfway through the little icon image of the PDF stroke shape. Which I renamed that, by the way. That's not its default name. But wait. The vertices of the buildings will look like they're falling over when wrapped on a mug. Hmm. You can see the edge of the document there. The buildings are straight up and down, but the mug's not. When you wrap that around a mug, the buildings will be falling over. Let's see how flowers look. Now, flowers look pretty good. You don't need to worry about verticals in flower because there are very few straight lines in nature. And you can see I've just placed it on top of the original um, Shanghai skyline I had there. And again, it's below, or inside if you like, that top layer. So you can have more than one image there, and you can turn them on and turn them off and export them however you like. To fix the verticals problem though, we will need to use the Mesh Warp tool, left hand side of the toolbar there, to bend the building image. Shall we try that? Because I'm sure the same will apply to lots and lots of images. Even lines of text will need bending. So there we go. I've set the opacity of the image 
to about 50%. Can I see it there? 42% I've set the opacity to. I move the image I want, which is the buildings of Shanghai, which are quite good there, and dragged it to the top of the layers so I can clearly see it. And selected the Mesh Warp tool, made sure that layer is selected. Select the Mesh Warp tool, which is one, two, the second one from the bottom, just above the spyglass. And so far I've only pulled the sides in and added curve to the top and bottom to give you an idea of the direction we're heading in. Now you can see I've only just pulled those in a little bit and lined the buildings up. You can leave it at that if you like. Bring it back to full opacity and then drag it back inside that top layer. And you'll have the building, you'll have that image correctly aligned. You can see the TV tower from Shanghai there is pretty much aligned with the right hand side angle of the mug template. Or you can bring the whole image in. I've completely resized the image, dragged it in so all the sides are correct and there's enough lean on there. You can see the building on the left hand side has got a nice lean on it. The curve at the bottom is up and the curve at the top is up. So that image has been bent to fit inside that shape. Just remains to bring up the opacity again and drag it into place. And there it is. The image is completely resized to fit and curved. Buildings, vertical lines, all in place. When you wrap that around your mug, it will look beautiful. Job done. So that's how easy it really is for a 20 ounce and a 30 ounce tapered skinny mug. Remember that when you come to print these out, your printer will undoubtedly give you grief. And if you don't have A3 capability, well, you'll have to experiment. You might get away with printing them in landscape or portrait mode on A4. Hmm, but some of these might be a bit big. You'll be better off with A3. Try if you like on A4 and see how you go. That part I'll leave to you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe.